We hope you've been enjoying the Wild Cumberland Podcast, where you can stay up to date on everything affecting Cumberland Island and its wilderness. If you value our mission and purpose, we ask that you share this episode with at least one friend. This simple act helps us grow our audience and improve our messaging for the organization. We thank you for your support, and before you go, be sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss an episode. Wild Cumberland is staffed entirely by volunteers. We say that a lot, often in passing, but we want to make sure our listeners understand what that really means. Our team members donate their time, effort, and talents to help ensure that Cumberland Island and its wilderness remain protected. Every volunteer can find a place with us. We invite you to sign up to staff Wild Cumberland events, contribute to the organization's social media, assist in grant writing, and much more. Join us at wildcumberland.org and help make a difference for the next generation. Welcome back. This is Jessica, the Executive Director of Wild Cumberland, and today I am joined by artist Dorothy O'Connor. Dorothy is a native Atlantan who began her art career in photography, but has expanded into installation, performance, and public art. So many of you have probably experienced her work in places like uh, the Atlanta Airport, where there's a life-sized photo mural, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art of Georgia, the Office of Cultural Affairs, Elevate Public Art Program, and even on the Beltline. So she's known, well-known is an understatement, for her ability to transform spaces really into places that tell a story. And I think some of the language that is often used to describe her work is fantastical, multidimensional, tactile, rich, and exciting. So all of this, of course, is what made her a perfect partner for our Art of Activism experience in partnership with the Atlanta Science Festival. This program was just recently held on March 10th. It included scientists, artists, advocates, and community members. Um, We gathered at Seven Stages Theater to discuss ideas surrounding wilderness, stewardship, and our future. But Dorothy's custom installation was the shall I say, piece de resistance. (laughs) It was what everyone wanted to see and inspired that conversation. So Dorothy, thank you for making the time to join us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I would love to start by sharing with our listeners a little about maybe your inspiration for and the actual installation of the piece that you created for this experience. Well, initially when, when you and I spoke, you know, you told me about the event and then that it was sort of coinciding with International Women's Day and the way that I, I process things and, and, and where a lot of my concepts come from is walking in nature. So immediately I went for a walk um, in Cascade Springs Nature Preserve, actually, just to be close just to be close to it. And so that's kind of where the inspiration came from, just walking and thinking about the event and Cumberland Island and International Women's Day. And I had done a piece. um, Oh yeah, a similar piece, right? A a similar piece um, probably four years ago for a gallery show. And it just struck me as something um, thematically very similar. And so I decided to do... Another version of that, it was this man, and it, you know, all of that seemed to fit with Wild Cumberland. So yeah, so that's kind of where the inspiration came from and the idea. And so to give our listeners some context, Dorothy, you took a fast solo trip to Cumberland Island for some inspiration. You had an extremely accelerated timeline to complete the installation, and you had an entirely different type of venue to install it in, a theater. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, the wonderful thing about it for me is Cumberland Island is somewhere. So I'm born and raised in Atlanta, and Cumberland Island is somewhere that I had always wanted to go and somehow just never had. And so that was another piece to this is actually just to go stay on Cumberland Island. Um, 
and to camp because I hadn't camped in probably 30 years and I love that. And so, yeah, that, that was such a beautiful thing to be able to go do that. And then, yeah, also the theater, that was a new experience, which at first I was a little nervous about, but it turned out to be kind of perfect, you know, like the, the space and just the latitude because everyone was completely open to me doing anything. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, and yeah, it, it was, that part was really lovely. And, you know, just to have the, even the ceiling height and then, and then the play itself, you know, kind of what it's about and kind of natural forces being actual characters in the play. Um, yeah, it, it all just seemed to work. I loved the challenge of, uh, first off, the idea I'm glad that it sort of went in that direction of being able to move, you know, making something. I'm so, yeah, I'm just glad for that inspiration. And then out of that, the ceiling hype and to be able to, to make um, something that could hang and float. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, that, that turned out to be just such a happy piece. And the only ways that people could experience this installation, what you were able to create in this enormous space was by participating, of course, in our Art of Activism dialogue or by attending the production of True North, which really only ran for a little over two weeks, I think. So um, it was a, a grand scale of a project for um, multiple purposes <laughs> and um <laughs> And done on a really accelerated timeline, I think, as compared to maybe your your previous installations. It it was, um, uh, but I will say, you know, I I'm not sure. Maybe I completely understood um, that that would be the case. Um, <laughs> but but that but you know that's in a way. I mean, I did have like a small sort of open house opening so that people that, you know, were not able to get into the sold out art of activism, um, uh, event, um, and, and that couldn't make the play for whatever reason could come see, um, the big lady as we affectionately call her. Um, so there was that, that opportunity, but also, um, I do feel like symbolically it, it is, you know, um, it's ephemeral and, and nature is ephemeral and, and having this sort of brief opportunity to, to interact with it just kind of also makes sense in that way. What was your camping experience like? You said this was on the, on your bucket list, right? It was somewhere you'd always wanted to go and this was your first time. So what was that like? You know, I, so I was, I was supposed to go with a, a friend um, who at the last minute got sick as everyone's been doing. Oh, yeah, you can. Hear and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I, I've sort of debated on whether or not to reschedule. Um, but in the end, I, I thought it would be kind of almost more meaningful just to go alone, you know, like another piece of the challenge just to continue like growing. And I'm so glad I did. Like it was, everything about it from the ferry over there to, you know, getting the camping gear out and setting that up, you know, something I hadn't done in quite some time, um, to exploring the Island, um, in just a brief period, you know, um, just trying to get away from anyone that was there and just going out alone and, and interacting, um, you know, just being among the, the live Oaks and, and the Paul, like just the whole different landscape that is Cumberland Island. And then the animals that were there and the sea, I mean, I hadn't been to the sea in, in far too long. And I mean, I love like walking along the beach and see, you know, looking at sea creatures that have washed up and the shells and looking for shark's teeth. And I mean, all of that stuff, it's just, it just brings me back to everything I loved about my childhood, basically. And cooking over the fire. Oh my God. So <laughs> I mean, yeah. We got to get you back out there more frequently. It is, uh, it can be really restorative and rejuvenating, um, while also exhausting. <laughs> uh, it's it's a different kind of exhaustion and one that is that can be very satisfying. I think on a lot of levels. Oh yeah. Well, and exhaustion didn't even play in. It was for me. It was totally restorative. I, you know, I think like coming home and decompressing was hard. Yeah. You know, because I really. 
I wanted to be back up there or down there or over there. Or, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to be back in, in that environment. Yeah, I, it was very special to me. Well, we tried really hard to recreate what you experienced there, that sort of sense of place for our Art of Activism event. We brought in natural sounds from the island and guests entered the theater to view the installation, the big lady, through this sort of forested uh, hallway experience. I thought it felt very much like walking on Cumberland Island, or at least as close (laughs) as we could get in the city. Um, And then Seven Stages, you know, the theater team managed to seat us in somewhat of a circle, like, or a spiral. Again, a tribute to science in our natural world with your installation, The Big Lady, as the focal point during that whole conversation. So this event, this experience, we were really sitting with her in an immersive way. It really felt like she was a part of the conversation, and it also felt in a way that we were there or or, or that the place was present. So um, I think it, it... your installation did a great job of, of what we hope to achieve, which was a sense of place and, and sort of centered in somewhere for our discussion. Um, but she was suspended in the air. You mentioned that. And yet she still felt grounded, right? <laughs> so it, it, I just was blown away by what you managed to do uh, with Thank just you, a short likewise. bit of inspiration <laughs> that you had. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. It was a really fun project. I mean... Um, and, and I, we keep calling her the big lady. I mean, is it okay to gender her that way? She is a woman, right? And (laughs) I don't want to misspeak or misrepresent your piece. Oh yeah, no, she, she, yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah, I think, um, she is affectionately called the big lady for sure. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, um, she, uh, yeah, I think for me that, that piece is important. I'm going to, um, and in the original piece, it was also a a large, you know, um, lady made out of natural materials. And, you know, I think, um, yeah, I, I think in a way making it like giving it sort of human form, like bringing all those elements kind of out of where they normally live and creating something new with them and this human form. Um, I can never say this word, right. You know, like I know it's somewhat like anthrop anthropogenic. <laughs> it's from, hard. From Nobody knows how to say it yeah. Properly. I don't. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but I, but I also think it's, it, you know, sort of humanizing things, you know, bringing them out of their, uh, their natural habitat and sort of, and then making this human form with them, you know, it is, it is all about what we do to the environment around us. Like we are doing to ourselves. Um, so yeah, so I think it works. It works. Um, that, uh, yeah, I mean, she, she is, she is a she. Well, how did it feel to sit there during that conversation and as an artist, see her as the focal point of, of the discussion that we had about wild places and advocacy? You know, I, so first off, it was a complete honor, you know, uh, just to be involved with it. And, and it's something that I, so I, I hope that this is kind of a, a direction of where my, my career, you know, my life is heading, you know, um, so, yes. Yeah, so thank you. And also, you know, I, I sort of almost forgot about it for me. I mean, I, I really got so ensconced in the discussion and the idea, you know, it, I, I wasn't even, you know, I was really just, it was kind of more about the information and the people around me and just learning and listening. Um, that's really what I, what I, I just got lost in that. And that part was really lovely too. Well, we really appreciate that you were willing to participate in that dialogue. We, um, I think really felt there was value in making sure that it wasn't just a group of talking heads or experts and that it was a dialogue and that we could have as much of the, of our community reflected there as, as we possibly could. Yeah. I, I hope there are future things like that. And even, even, you know, ongoing more than one, you know, like something that people could, could continue to take part in. And then maybe, well, you mentioned you want to do more of these. Do you consider yourself 
an, an environmentalist? Do you consider yourself an activist or do you like categorizing yourself as an artist? How do you, how do you view your work right now and where you want it to go? I, um, so I don't, I guess I don't really think in terms of labels or anything like that, but, um, you know, and I've never thought of myself as an activist, but I, I love that. I love that, um, term, you know, um, and, and animals. I mean, all, all of that, it just, it means so much to me. Um, the wildness, you know, um, well, we're interconnected, right? We, we rely upon each other. We can't exist without making sure that, that the rest of our systems are protected. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I would, anything that, I mean, I always said like kind of any project that takes me outside, um, is a good start and any project that, you know, it happens, um, that is sort of inspired by the preservation of the natural world. Well, where did your love from the natural wor- world develop? Uh, I mean, I'm a parent. I think many of our listeners are somehow invested in the next generation. So I'm curious, were there experiences or individuals who are really, you know, influential maybe as you were growing up that, that you feel contributed to where you are? Well, first off, you know, I grew up in Atlanta um, in the in the early 70s. So it was a very different place back then. You know, so much development had not taken place. And behind my house, um, there was a creek and like a little dell kind of wooded area. Like in my imagination, it was huge. In, real, in reality now, it's really <laughs> not. But um, but I, you know, I think pr- probably I was born somewhat with a, just a curiosity about the natural world and animals and all that stuff. But I did spend so much of my childhood, um, you know, spend, I, I would love to like turn over rocks in the creek and just discover all the animals and the critters, you know, down there. And my parents, uh, luckily, were really, they fostered that. They were totally comfortable with me spending a ton of time outside, just in nature, away from the, you know, like just wherever I was, it was cool, you know? Um, and then I also was so lucky to get to go to camp. I went to camp in North Georgia and I would go for like a a sleepover camp for like a month at a time. And that just being out in nature and, you know, we were basically sleeping in tents. Um, oh my God. I mean, every day was just a new discovery and, um, I learned just constantly, you know, I, I learned from the environment around me more than, you know, I ever school, I wasn't so great in school as far as all that goes. Um, so yeah, I think that, that, that is where kind of like my, the love came from just being able to, to be outside as a kid and notice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, So much I think of, of, our appreciation comes from a sense of, of awe and wonder, but you can only achieve that if you're really taking the time and going slow enough to observe, right? It's or, true. Yeah. I think curiosity is so important and, and not being afraid of, you know, getting your hands dirty. Well, I think people are so drawn to your work in part because you have this integration and juxtaposition of both like natural and, you know, urban or man-made elements. So I wonder, is there like a lesson or a message that you feel like you either support or are conveying to the public when you use and, and recreate, um, you know, shapes and forms out of natural materials or scenes. I don't even want to say shapes and forms. That's, that's too limiting scenes out of natural materials. Is there like a lesson in that, that you hope people, um, both in your choice of materials and in the content that you create? I think so. I, you know, I walk a lot. I walk and walk. Um, I have a lot of dogs and I have a, a park down the street from my house. That's really beautiful. I'm so lucky to, to have that. Um, and I being so close to the ground all of the time and really, you know, it, interested in what's happening around me and, um, everything, plants, trees, flowers, critters, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's, 
it's so beautiful. Like there's so many beautiful things that I think, especially because people get busy and they don't, they don't spend a lot of time outside. I mean, it's, it is hard to day to day do that. Um, that, and, and I think like trees, I think we're so used to see that we end up taking things for granted. Um, there's so much beauty around us all the time, but we don't see it, you know, cause it's always there. And, and so that is partially it, you know, to, to, to take these things and, and use them and, to sort of save them in a way. Um, and to create something different with them so that maybe, maybe when, you know, they might be taken for granted in the wild, but if you see them in a totally different setting, like you see how, how special and significant they are. Um, I think that's, that is definitely part of it. Um, and then part of it is I do, I just want to save everything. I don't, you know, like it's the second I notice it and it becomes beautiful to me. Like it's, it's important, you know, it, it takes on like a, like the big lady, like that's, that's not just a piece of, of, you know, pieces of, of nature that she has, she has a, she is a she to me. Like she has a, I don't want to say a soul, but kind of, you know, I mean, she is something different now. I mean, every piece that you collected and placed in on the big lady was sort of really thoughtfully and carefully curated. So there is a lot of, I think, love in that or, and, and I think it's reflected in the work. That, thank you. That I, that is so true. And I, and I, you know, I, I think you and I forming a friendship, especially around, you know, like throughout this whole process and you having a huge hand in, in helping with collecting materials, like that is all a piece of it too. And then, you know, it being at seven stages with this group of amazing people that were, that were so lovely to work with that's a piece of it too. I mean, everything goes into the work. Um, all that love goes into it for sure. I can't take a, I can't wait to take a walk with you. Um, I think it, it might last all day, but I look forward to getting out and observing our world with you and, and getting to yeah. experience it through your, your eyes. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us and for your participation in making it all possible. And I think, I mean, really mostly thanks for sharing your artistic gifts in ways that I think inspire us and help change, I hope the world. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you. I, I loved being a part of this in every single way. And I feel like the, the being able to, to work in that world and then be able to suspend her was like a new challenge and also kind of a new direction, um, for me and my work. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm grateful for that too. I feel like I have a, like a whole new sort of I don't know, ideas and directions that I can go with that. So yeah, that was, all of it was just incredibly inspirational. Thank you. Well, we're, we're just incredibly humbled and grateful that, that our cause resonates with you and that you were willing to, to donate so much of your time and talent to helping us um, create this experience. I do hope we see a lot more work in this style from you. I am really excited um, to see more, more of this type of material. And I think the turnout and demand for the, I mean, the tickets, I mean, you know, people, it resonates with people and, and I think people want to see it. So I also want to remind everybody listening that the best way to support Dorothy or artists like her is to commission them for work. Right. And <laughs> so Dorothy, tell our listeners how they can view, purchase, support your work. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, well, first off, can you imagine um, a space with multiple big ladies? Oh I mean, you know, like now I'm like, oh my God, I want to oh make, I want to make more and I want to make them out of like other special places in Georgia or in the South, Southeast, you know, that yes. are, that are endangered from development or whatever. Like, I love this idea. yes, like, 
Oh my God. Um, so yeah. So if anyone's listening, <laughs> right. Let's make that happen. Right. High museum, something. <laughs> yeah. Like let's, let's do it somewhere public and that a lot of people can see it. And then it maybe it can inspire people to, to get involved and, you know, okay, fun, okay, swamp. I mean, yeah, we have so many um, special places to take care of in our state, yes, in our country. So many and so many at risk, yep. you know? So yes, absolutely. Okay. So that's one. Um, yeah, commission me. Absolutely. Um, and you know, more, more opportunities Tell us for your this website type of thing. for our listeners. Public. Where can they go to see? Oh yes. Okay. Um, yes. And they can also buy prints. I, I do, I build large scale fantastical sets and I photograph them. And so, um, there are prints available of those as well. My website is, um, Dorothy O'Connor.com. My Instagram is Dorothy dot O'Connor dot nine, the number nine. Um, and then Facebook, oh, it's like Dorothy O'Connor installation artist, I think. But anyway, just you'll find me. Yeah, absolutely. You can find Dorothy through our pages, if nothing else, because we have tagged her appropriately in some great photography from the Atlanta Science Festival um, and Seven Stages. So before we go, I do want to just make sure we give a special thank you. I know you've talked about what an incredible experience it was working with Seven Stages Theater, and it really was. They were so gracious. They were so kind. And none of this would have been possible without the support of the Atlanta Science Festival, who really, I think, helped rally, um, you know, everyone around science in a fresh new way um, that is really important for our future. So we could not have done this just as you mentioned with your, your installation, but we could not have done this entire experience without the collaboration and participation of so many partners. Um, And that includes even our volunteers. I mean, we have a number of, of wild Cumberland volunteers who were um, who share our commitment to producing impactful programming, creative, impactful programming for the public at no cost. So I'm really grateful to everybody who helped make this possible. And I'll mention there that, uh, of course, anybody listening can always be a part of our work. We always need volunteers to help staff events and develop programs like this, contribute to research. If you're interested in volunteering, you know how to reach us. You can email me at info at wildcumberland.org. We would love to have you. And of course, your donations help make this type of programming free and available to the public on a regular basis. So please consider making a donation. And um, those are the ways that you can help ensure that the arts and science continue to have dialogue in this way. Thanks, Dorothy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything. The Wild Cumberland podcast is produced by Vertical River, and this episode was edited by Greg Cusan. Wild Cumberland is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and all donations are tax deductible. Learn more and take action at wildcumberland.org. Mm-hmm.